I'm Sarah Olson. I'm the education coordinator for the Belcher Art Center. I'm about to throw a cylinder for you. So I'm just gonna take my sponge, I'm just gonna clean out the wheel. I am going to just touch my finger to the very surface. I put a little bit of water on there because I do want this porcelain to stick to the wheel head and pat it a little bit. I am going to um, use my finger to just seal that bottom edge. And what that does is that makes sure that when I put some water on here to start centering it, it's not going to seep underneath the edges and move all of this around. Centering is the most important thing to do before anything else because it sets us up for success. I'm gonna get a handful of water. I'll put it on my porcelain. Now porcelain doesn't throw the same as clay all the time. You don't have to be as bossy with it, um, but you need to have a very clear message, kind of like working with a toddler. So I explain centering in that I, my left hand, because I'm a right-handed person, my left hand is Spider-Man. So I'm gonna press in with my palm right there. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna press in right there and on this uh, longer axis, I'm gonna be pushing in while this spins. And then my right hand is a karate chop hand. And I say this to four-year-olds, I say it to 84-year-olds, um, because we, the whole point of centering is to uh, condense the clay into a vi the very center of our wheel. We've got all these concentric circles on the outside of our wheel. We wanna push it into the center. So I'm gonna make our hands wet. And I'm gonna start off, my arms are tucked in to my uh, core of my body. And I've got over here off camera, I've got my arm leaning against my uh, knee. So you can see already just while I've been talking that pressing in with just my hand makes that clay move up quite a bit. I don't know if you can see that a little bit. So I'm gonna put a little bit more water on there because I've been talking. But then as soon as I add my karate chop hand and I'm pressing down, then all of a sudden we're getting our clay a little bit more, it's as tall as it is wide, almost. It's a little nice little patty. So what I'm gonna do is instead of just using my um, Spider-Man hand, it's called Spider-Man because Spider-Man shoots his uh, web out of this part of his palm, although six-year-old boys will argue with that with me. I will t I'm will. i gonna tuck my fingers around this ball of clay so that way on this side, it's cleaning up this edge right here at the same time. And get a little bit more water. I throw pretty wet because porcelain, when it gets dry, it gets really sticky. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of bearing down like this. So I'm gonna go just down. Now, if you're right-handed, that means that your hand, right hand is probably stronger than everything. If you just put your right hand down, you're gonna flatten this out. And you're gonna start working towards a plate. And we wanna make a cylinder today. So I'm gonna tuck my fingers further in, bring it in. And the key is you wanna have equal pressure from your right hand and your left hand. Now, if I ever have, am having trouble centering, so like if this is just off like this and I'm you know, just having a super hard time with it, there is one technique that you can do to try and you know, get control of your clay. First, I'm gonna use my thumb and I am going to tuck it right under here and I'm gonna pull up all this clay. This is a skirt that can make your hand bump around. It's just a little bit of clay that gets tucked under where your fingers can't find it, right? So I'm gonna take that clay, I'm gonna stick it off to the side. But we're gonna do something called coning. So I'm gonna grab all this clay that won't center because it's giving me a hard time and I'm gonna just grab it and I'm gonna squeeze it till it comes up into a cone, right? So it's, you know, moving a little bit and then I'm gonna put a little bit more water on back there. I'm gonna grab it with my thumbs like this and I'm gonna press it back down slowly. And that should I'm gonna tuck my fingers in the front here. I'm gonna bring that in. And that should help quite a bit. So next step is, once I have this centered, is I'm gonna put the hole in. 
flatten that out just a little bit more because I want to make a cylinder. Now, remember, there is just a teeny bit of a wiggle there, and it doesn't matter because we're not computers. This cup will not be spinning on a wheel when people are using it. And so the little tiny bits, the little tiny wiggles that we might see, it's not gonna matter because it's gonna be still. So don't, don't try to be too much of a, a perfectionist and I know you wanna be. The next step is gonna be putting the hole in. Now I think it's really important to make sure you have your arms tucked against your core, but then my left hand, because I'm right-handed, my left hand is gonna be holding my right hand. It's gonna be a support system. And I'm going to take my middle finger, which is my longest finger, and I'm just going to press down into the very center lightly so that I can see where my center is, right? I wanna make sure that this is, yeah, that's mostly center. So I'm gonna make my hole right there. I'm gonna get a little bit more water on my finger and with my left hand supporting my right hand, I'm going to press down and I'm gonna slowly walk it down. You do need to put a little bit of pressure on this, kind of like when we were centering. And you wanna go all the way down. You don't wanna necessarily go straight down. I like to go at a little bit of an angle. So that way, cause I can always bring it out further. So I'm gonna push my finger down to the center here, but I wanna leave enough room on the bottom so that I am, I can you know, trim it, I can um, compress it, it's not gonna crack on me. If, if the bottom is too thin, then you're not gonna be able to do much with it and the potential for it cracking in the drying process is pretty intense. I'm gonna put a little bit more water on here. I'm gonna put two fingers in here. Notice how my left hand is still holding my right hand. I'm gonna put a couple fingers in here and I'm gonna pull this out towards my belly button. And this is creating the floor of the vessel, of the cylinder that we're making. But do you notice how my fingers kind of made a little bump right there in the middle? The next step is to compress the bottom. So I'm putting my fingers back in and I'm pressing down on the bottom. I'm starting on the outside edge and I'm working my way in. I'm starting on the very outside edge. I'm working my way in. This is going to make sure that all the particles align. And before they're getting kind of torqued because we're you know, centering it and pushing it back down and moving it all around. We want them to lay nicely on top of one another. That eliminates the risk of, or it reduces the risk of S cracks. I've got a sponge. I'm also going to compress with a sponge, especially if you have thinner fingers than I have. I have a little, I have some flat, you know, kind of, you know, paddle like fingertips. So sometimes a sponge will help eliminate those bumps that are in there. So now that I've, one, gotten all the water out of the inside and compressed it just slightly with my sponge, I am going to put a little bit more water on the edge of my pot and I'm gonna pull the wall up. So what's fun is I like to grab just a little bit of water and then just let, you know, some water drips right onto the edge so that they kind of go off on both sides. So now you can see a little bit of water in there. There's a little shininess. There's a little bit of water that goes out there. Porcelain can be finicky to work with it or it just particular, maybe not finicky. You don't want too much water. You want just the right amount. So putting just a little, just a few drops of water on there can be really help, helpful. So. The final step, when you want to pull up a wall, you have to readjust yourself, sit up a little bit more straight. You're going to tuck your left hand fingers on the inside and your right hand fingers on the outside. But then they want to communicate with each other. So you need to cross your thumbs just like that, right? And your fingers are going to pinch together the wall of clay, the hunk of clay while you move your hand up a little bit. Now it's interesting because it depends on what form you wanna make. If you're making a very wide form, your left hand can pull out further like that. And you can pull it, you can make a little bowl or a, you know, a wide open cup. But if you're trying to make something that's tall, you want your outside fingers to be slightly above your inside fingers when they're pulling the wall up, as opposed to the outside finger, the inside fingers being up, 
above the outside fingers. So when you put your fingers, you want to start down here at the bottom, you want to grab that hunk of clay, and you want to, with the finger, with your hands touching each other, you're moving slowly, you're moving with the wheel as it turns. You do not want to make faster movements than how the wheel is going. I'm gonna take a little bit more drips of water. I'm gonna put those right on there. Just a few drips of water. And it looks like things are going pretty well, but now I'm gonna do a shaping pull. So you do, you know, two or three pulls to get the height that you want. You wanna, but you wanna pay attention to what, how thick that feels in your hands, right? So I'm gonna go back down here towards the bottom and I'm not using much pressure. I'm just trying to figure out how thick that wall is. And I'm just walking it up. You can see how my left hand is still connected to my right hand. Very nice. I do feel like this is a little bit of a wide cup. I sat back a little bit. Oh. Okay. Now porcelain can do that to us. So I guess that this cup just want, that's what it wants to do right now. But you can put your hand back in here and you can actually shape this pretty nicely. If you wanted this to be a little bit wider on the bottom, you use your inside hands to push out while your outside hands kind of guide what's happening with the clay. Now, if you have a tall thing, use your thumb push it over like that so that it touches your lip a little bit. This is a nice little wine goblet, I think. So the ne final step is you wanna make sure that, you see all that water in there? It's really shiny. We wanna use our sponge and we wanna get all that water out and especially with porcelain, you wanna make sure that it is not shiny in there. There's no water. I'm gonna use my metal rib. I'm going to do some shaping on the outside. Porcelain wants to be bossed around just a little bit. I use a metal rib and I'm just going to go through the, I'm just holding the inside just gently with my fingers and I'm just pulling, this is all just goop. It's wet goop. It's not solid clay. And then I'm going to go back through with my pinchy fingers just going to delicately hit that lip. Now, if this is a time where your walls are nice and you know thin, they're the exact thickness that you want them to be, but you you know have a uh, a lip that's uneven, now is the time where you can cut that off because the um, walls are thin, are the same thickness. So I can actually use my wooden or I can actually use my metal rib to cut this rim off right there. Eh. And end of video.